بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين إن شاء الله today we will continue our English lectures I'm very sorry previously I I promised you guys I would continue more I would continue giving more English lecture but for some reason I would I was not able but إن شاء الله in the coming few uh, days and weeks I will be talking more about a lot of stuff in the Quran, the energy, then the Holy Quran, the energy, and many secrets about uh, the Holy Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Ahlul Bayt. And I will be even diving more deeper into the what's going on now in the world uh, from the political point of view, from uh, different point of view, from the Shia point of view, what exactly going to happen in the future regarding Imam al Mahdi sallallahu alayhi Now, with, our, with this lecture, I will be talking about secret of the quran al kareem i would be talking i would be talking few i would be taking few questions from uh, brothers and sisters that I, would, I a few days ago on my personal page on facebook i said i will take few uh, uh, answers and questions inshallah in the future the people who listen on youtube i'll be more than happy to answer your questions in a specific muhadara directly after this lectures Today I'm uh, talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ultimate secret of the universe, how Allah azza wa jal created him. In some previous lecture I spoke about that. Uh, I will be diving today about what exactly the Quran al-Kareem, why Allah azza wa jal spoke about the what we call the Muhammadi status. What is the Muhammadi status? What, what about the different prophets? Uh, I will be revealing things that you never heard of inshallah and this is will be helping many people in the science of energy and Islam and they will be, help, be helping people to unlock the secrets of the Quran Karim the more you read it the more you see it in front of your eyes the more you see things connecting between what Allah Azza wa Jal want us from now and uh, during the Zuhur time for the Imam Al-Mahdi Sallallahu Alaihi what is the Muhammadi status exactly? Muhammadi status is the status that Allah Azza wa Jal made us think that he was talking about Rasulullah and the Holy Quran but he was not talking to him at the same time. He was talking to the people who really going to achieve this level of knowledge, this level of uh, connection with Allah Azza wa Jal, spirituality, giving uh, a person who is connecting with Allah Azza wa Jal from many levels. Inshallah, I will I will talk more more about it. Let's talk about different prophets first, and and then we will reach the connection with the nafs, yani the self. Why Allah Azza wa Jal talked about the prophets in the Holy Quran in this way? For example, you open certain verses, you see Musa alayhi salam over here. He's saying Allah talking to him, and then different verses saying that Allah Azza wa Jal is revealing this through a, a medium, a person, or a, a, an angel. Uh, uh, different verses you will see Musa alayhi salam, yani Allah Azza wa Jal has given us each picture from different from different angle. And he wants us to think about it. Why is Allah Azza wa Jal has given these angles? Because this later will unlock what is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Because we established before that all prophets are pictures from Rasulullah. All of them are pictures. Yani we have 124,000 prophets. Those 124,000 prophets, in order for you to know Rasulullah, you need to know about them. But Allah Azza wa Jal did not mention them in the Holy Quran, all of them. Because there is many connection between each other. But he mentioned few and those one, those from the five Ulil Azim. Those five Ulil Azim are very important to know why he mentioned them in the Holy Quran. Time. Let's first talk about Prophet Isa, Jesus salam. Prophet Isa, in most of his, what he gave to people, he was always connect, connecting to, to, he was always walking in the desert, he was walking in places, he was, he was, he was trying to raise the people from from uh, raise the dead from the dead from raise the people from the death so his connection with earth always you see the connection with earth and this is one of the significance where we some people they say in a science of energy we have 
all always Alayhi they spoke about four things you know the earth the water the air and the fire and many many people they make fun of it they say Allah Azza wa did not mention that in the Holy Quran actually he did he did mention that in the, in the stories of the Prophet why because he is going at the end of the day talking about you what is important how you raise yourself how to go to the Muhammadi status now we'll see what is Muhammad says. You will be surprised about many things in the Holy Quran. Many things in the Holy Quran now will make sense to you. Why Allah Azza wa Jal is talking like that? Fine. Now we see Prophet Isa alayhi salam. All what he did is connected to earth. Connected to earth. Raising people from the earth. He know what you, uh, what you are, what you have home. You know at your house from food. You know what you ate, what you eat from mostly like vegetables animals any anything meats he used to know he has this miracles and all his stories in the holy quran is talking about raising from earth like raising from you have only one mother you know the mother is mary salam. inshallah we'll dive even deeper next time with mary what is the secrets of mary why she she holds the jesus but this today is not our subject and this is will give you really very good views about uh, many sciences to come this is the first part Isa alayhi salam the second part is Musa alayhi salam Moses Musa is always connecting with water you know he was able to split the sea and walk he threw his his uh, stick and he, he got 12 rivers he was able to uh, uh, go to you know when he married his wife from from the, the 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 daughter of the prophet first he met them next to the water so most of his actions you know he went with uh, his wasi uh, bin Noon, to uh, to meet al uh, khidr alayhi salam in the sea in surah al kahf so always there is sea there is water 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 allah azza wa jalla he's, he's telling us you know even his mother you know i'm just trying to remember all his connection she put him in this taboot and she throw him in the river and then his uh, the wife Pharaoh's wife and she used to be one from the four best women any yani best woman uh, I think her name is Asia bint Muzahim she was able to uh, to take uh, take him from the river and and raise him subhanallah so his connection to water is very important Allah Azza wa Jal is trying to tell us always there is water hey remember the water with Musa alayhi salam there is always water why you're not listening to the water you know so subhanallah there is always this connection with water and we're trying our best to see it so let's stop with Musa alayhi salam and let's move to a different prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Ibrahim, Ibrahim alayhi salam he's always talking about fire you know the fire with Ibrahim alayhi salam they they raised all this fire and they throw him the fire and what you know what happened between throwing Ibrahim alayhi salam to fire Jibreel came in and he told him oh Abraham I will be able to save you just say please save me and he said no I will not ask you anything uh, anything I will always ask Allah azza wa jal for help and if he want to help me he will help me if he doesn't I will be a murder, martyr and this is uh, this is actually a dignity uh, like something very great all prophets uh, uh, the prophets the awliya al-bayt they wanted to be martyrs and uh, so he was thrown far and allah azza wa jal you know what he did to the fire he ordered it to be peace so talking about fire even <coughs> why why there is connection between ibrahim alayhi salam and the fire because ibrahim alayhi salam he is representing rasulullah from the, the same way he when he called us for Hajj, you know, what does what does Hajj represent? Hajj represent the picture when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the previous world, in the previous world when we were first created from void, and I have a lecture about how we were created from void. Please listen to it because it's very important. It really the the, uh, the uh, it will really show you all the secrets where you came from exactly, why you are here, what you're doing here. It's it's completely different signs that never been tackled before. It is all proven from the Quran al Karim. It's not science fiction. It's real. I showed it from the universal map map from the universe. What exactly the void and why Allah Azza wa Jal created the void and why there was void anyway. 
and how we were we came from void and why all our bad action is voiding action not the reality because it's reverse nur of rasulullah anyway this is a different lecture i would really love if you listen to it because it will give you so much information that you really respect how you allah Azzawajal, created you and why you were created this way anyway so ibrahim alayhi salam when he he is he said you know he, he was raised to the mountain he said oh allah how can i how can i ask people to come to the hajj there is nobody he said you ask and i'll make people to come same thing rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he were he were the, the pre, in the previous life he he asked us all to come from the void and we we did say yes to rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's why it called the muwathiq in the whole quran al -Kareem. this is what means the mithaq you know when musa alayhi salam went to pharaoh uh, and he showed him the mithaq mithaq yani the contract the real contract he showed him the reality of the existence from the very beginning which is now you can see it whatever i'm telling you now you can open the quran and you say the mithaq what is the mithaq mawasiq in our quran in the contracts in our quran al -Kareem. and and now you see even in different place different place you see uh, uh, him rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking people to come from al adam what is Adam mean? You know, the Adam, the, the void. And what is the the void exactly and why we're here? So uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, he talked about Ibrahim because he wanted to tell us the void later will be fire. The void later will be fire. Why? Because it will, you know, the universe when it re will re recontract it, it will become a piece of fire. Same thing like Allah Azza wa Jal created it before because he created it from Noor. And this one was mentioned from the first page in the Holy Bible uh, because the, there are certain places in the Bible that nobody really interfered with because it did not affect the political system before they said you know what let's just keep it and subhanallah what they kept from the specifically from the first page of the Bible is how Allah Azza wa Jal created Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, how he created Imam Ali from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how there was light and they split this light together uh, and uh, this is Ibrahim alayhi salam. This, the, the, the third one, the fourth one, fourth one is Sulaiman alayhi salam. You see Sulaiman, he's always with the wind. He's, he has this carpet, flying carpet. He, used, he was flying and he heard this. And, and, and there's many things he was talking about the wind always, how he controlled the wind, how uh, the wind will be controlled later by Imam Mahdi salam alayhi from the numerous numerous uh, hadith uh, from the Sunni and the Shia and and uh, all this mawarith al-anbiya will come for sure to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he really gave them to those anbiya so we have those four those four and for sure the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that no one able to prove it now the ether the no one able to prove it so far because it is the fabric of the universe and if you're talking about the fabric you need to use tools that we don't have now we will be able to get them in the future specifically now if you read more in science you will really see how much where the humanity is so advanced in the new physics and quantum physics and able to go tackle the 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 fabric of the universe itself hopefully inshallah this is will unleash many secrets about what is the ether is which is is represented by the the foundation and yani the, the foundation of the universe how we really live in this fabric how the earth is in this fabric how the universe and this fabric and how we all here in this universe because of the existence of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and halbayt because we have a, this narration that say if earth if imam mahdi let's say he's not or any imam that does not live in earth anymore Allah Azza wa Jalla will not see any reason for this earth to exist anymore because humanities are so he heavily uh, playing with the bad deeds and you see all the facade now you see how much how much uh, uh, we have facade in everywhere in the, in governments in people in the in the economic system and in, in agricultural system and all systems uh, that we have uh, even in the sea, look what's happening in the sea and how people throw garbage in the sea and they use the sea only for very bad re uh, reason than the, making the water very polluted, making the air very polluted and what we see in Arabic, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر so 
we have those prophets now we see when we talk about those prophets we see why Allah Azza wa Jal he's talking from different point from different angle not point of view from different angle why because he is talking about nafs he's talking about your nafs like where we see the nafs here the, uh, what prophet really presented the nafs the best prophet that presented the nafs is prophet Yusuf alayhi salam Prophet Joseph. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, if you see how he came to life, he came to life and while he were, was born, his mother uh, died immediately. Yani immediately died and then uh, his his father was going to raise him. Then his brother took him and threw him in al -Jub, in a cave, small cave down where, where is water. Like, he, were, he was staying there for three days. Okay. Every day present a fossil and every every day presented for for example a pregnant woman she will have three fossil. First one, what we call it when the Allah Azza wa Jal create the body inside and then he will insert the nafs in that and then he will connect the aql inside and then aql yani the, the brain, the mind, he will start realizing. You see the, the pregnant woman in a seven months at the end the seven seven yani between seven and eight she will start realizing that the baby is kicking the baby is she feel it you know the mother usually feel the baby is hungry the baby is laughing you know the baby subhanallah it's like his mind is now there after he got his his soul you know soul usually ulama say from from two and a half to four you know his soul now it's it's there it's you know like a Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal will insert the soul after inserting the body first. And then you see, Subhanallah, even at the very beginning when the egg is fertilized, it always, the, the, the way it start dividing will come to five and then it will start booming. You know, if you see the biology, if you study biology, you see how Allah, how Allah Azza wa Jal created this fertilization in very unique way and beautiful way that it will reach five and then it will start booming subhanallah like he's talking about those four four uh, symbols of nature now he's saying look i'm creating those each one will carry something each one of these cells will carry something that will become you in the future you are you are constructed from those four items and from the ether that will connect in them all together and he's talking about this indirectly in a biology because it's making you now and subhanallah this is the third so it's presented by yusuf yusuf he was saying three days in this job and then people he, they came in they saw him you know they took him they took him to egypt you know all over there now egypt presenting allah Azza wa Jal presenting egypt and zulaikha you know the woman who bought who bought uh, uh, yusuf alayhi salam I, I, the, like the life you know life she will raise you. She will be like your mother. You know, Zulaikha raised Yusuf. And then he turned 18, 19. He's now beautiful. He's, he's full of power. You know, he has muscles. He learned. He can go work. He can make money. He, he's starting his life. Now, what she did, she said, you know, in the Holy Quran, she closed the doors. And and she took off her her clothes. And she said, hey, Dalak, this is all for you. I'm presenting this for you because Yusuf he was so beautiful. And subhanallah, if you if you see if you really go deeper in the, like you put microscope in the in the meaning of this, Yusuf alayhi salam he looked up, he said, Oh God, what what she's doing to me, what she's going to do to me, I I seek refuge. And he looked through the windows, you know, subhanallah, it's like she was able life is able to control your doors. But life does not control your windows, windows that make you exit, exit it, make you look outside, make you look at, at, at angels outside, asking Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the symbol, it's symbolizing. And now over here, like she told him, if you don't do this, if you don't go with life, whatever life offering you the bad stuff, I'm going to put you in prison. And she said he asked Allah Azza wa to be in prison better than doing, committing whatever she's asking him to do. Now we see the ahadith from Ahl Bayt Salaamu Alaikum. What they say? They say, Al Sijnu, Al Dunya Sijnu Al Mu'min. Life, yani we live in, is the decision, is the, is the decision of the Mu'min, is the prison of the Mu'min. 
You see now we see why uh, why why Ahl al-Bayt said that because they understand the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal taught them all these things. They say at dunya sajna al-mu'min. If you live in life, life will always tell you, hey, come steal. You're now so beautiful. You're so powerful. You see when someone 17, 18 years old, he's he has a lot of plans. He wanna buy the best cars. He wanna do he wanna do clubbing. He wanna go drink. He wanna so and so and so. If you do that, you're in life. You go in life. Life will take you away from Allah Azza wa Jal. If you say no to that, will will put you in prison. Many people they think it's a prison that we don't live anymore. No, you do do live the best life. You'll be wise uh, if you if you t you go away from those ones. You'll be religious. You'll you'll always fight, serve your community. You'll you'll be so wise about what Iblis and the bad people they're doing doing to our kids and to ourselves and to our women destruction and. The mental destruction. You see how what how much we have divorced now. How much we have people they don't know how to raise their kids. How, because we're always so busy thinking about ourselves. Always so busy thinking about how can I, can I make myself happy? How can I go around religion? How can I not fast Shahar Ramadan? Nobody's seeing. I can eat. You know. So they think all this thing will just pass because they didn't see Allah Azza wa Jal. They closed the windows too. They didn't open the windows asking Allah Azza wa Jal to help them and to guide them so this is the so uh, when he he was he lived there in a prison and then later he was going subhanallah he went outside the prison and Allah Azza wa Jal gave him high status that might be in Alam al -Raja or it might be in Alam al dunya again and later there's some narration that say that later Allah Azza wa Jal he made Zulaikha young again and Yusuf السلام, was able to marry it so over here he was able to marry it in a halal way so Allah Azza wa is telling you you can do it halal why you doing it haram you see he, he's saying you want to make money you can make it in a halal way if you know the way how to make it because you follow the way of Allah Azza wa Jal Allah Azza wa Jal he took all the obstacles but you have to pass by obstacles for you to learn how to be patient how to be wise how to serve people how to see the poor how how how, how. there are many things that we learned from Sulaiman salam. so Sulaiman here presented ourselves, our nafs like what else in the Holy Quran presenting something that we really it's really good to control ourselves to reach the Muhammad status I will I will get you the definition of what is Muhammad status exactly the 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 beautiful thing about even uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam when he start talking with Sheba the queen of Sheba her name was Balqis you know he start talking to her he said you know the the bird the bird is uh, hood hood you know and and I told you before there is a presentation it's symbolic in the Quran even though there is real creation the hood hood he really he really go went there and he really saw and he came back to uh, Nabi Sulaiman but Allah Azza wa Jal he told us the Quran has a deeper meaning not just like a he's not giving you entertainment he's not just saying you know there's a story of a bird you know he was passing flying and then suddenly he saw people worshiping the sun without Allah so the bird fell, felt bad and then he came to Sulaiman and he told him so and so and Sulaiman he said oh let's make those people Muslims no actually it's not just like that it's more deeper Allah Azza wa Jal he's mentioning that because our nafs what is the nafs here inside our self? Yani Sulaiman he presented this out, outside self, outside uh, uh, judgment in imtihan al dunya and what exactly is going to happen in dunya. But Sheba and Sulaiman are presenting something else. They're talking about the inside self. What is the inside self? Inside self usually is Hawaii. Yani show go with the wind. Nahna we're very angry sometimes and then we go down. This is like a wind. The wind usually go, you, you know, when someone changes opinion very fast. So you see, he said, ah, this guy is windy. You know, he's 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 sometimes angry, sometimes not angry, happy, not happy. He's moody, you know, flipping moods. This is like wind, you know, that when you study the horoscopes, you say those, those certain horoscopes follow the fire because most of the, the when they fired, they're fire people, they're always angry, you know, they're fire. Earth, same thing, they're a little cold the the special yani metal capricorn so on so there's and then the, we have the the water and then we have the the air so even even the signs of the horoscope that existing around us 
uh, they they have those signs because all uh, of prophets they put the, this kind of signs, this kind of places because they know from Allah Azza wa how he created the nafs. Anyway, so when he spoke about Shiva and Sulaiman, you know, he sent her this letter. This uh, this letter I spoke about before. I do not agree that he's saying just Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and La Ta'alu Alayhi wa Tuni Muslimin. I don't be above me and come Muslims. No, he did not just say Allah Azza wa Jal is telling you with this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is teaching you what's Allah Azza wa Jal teaching you in the Holy Quran. And yani he's 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 you know because this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is substituting the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim that exists on the Surah Al-Munafiqin. Because he didn't put Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Bara'a, Surah Bara'a. He did not put Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim there. So this one is a substitution. But many people said, you know, oh, maybe he said Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Like, you know, this is how we start our letter. Yes, we start always by the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. But the reality is he is given us, he's telling us that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim means something. This thing is the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. You know, he's, he he mentioned the Tawheed. What is the Tawheed? Who is Allah Azza wa Jal? He showed her proof. So, Sheba, she took the letter and she read it. She said, you know what? She, she's sitting with her generals. You know, she said, what do you think about this letter? She was wise. They said, if you, he, uh, this guy look wise, this little guy look powerful. If you do peace with him, we do peace. If you don't, we are good. We are powerful. You know, the, yani they gave her the good advice. She said, yeah, you know what? I want to be like, I want to be, I want to I wanna give him a present. I want to show him how rich we are. So she sent him present. And when he received them, he was angry. He said, are you barbering me with this, uh, with this, uh, with the, wherever you are? You don't see what I have? And immediately he was able to move her throne from Yemen to to what we call now between Palestine and Lebanon. He was able to remove it with the people, with everybody inside in the flash of an eye, in the blink of an eye. Right? And this is science. And this is have presentation in yourself. I'll show you where. So Sulaiman he showed her that he showed this nafs uh, what presented by Balqis, the the Queen of Sheba. He sh he when he got her he said, Isn't it this is your throne? She said, Yeah it looked like this is my throne. How was how were you able to move it that fast? And then he, they went inside a small room, and this is where the great, the great misunderstanding of ulama, that's very bad of what happened. This mis and misunderstanding over the years, really made many people fun of it when they went together inside this room, and she felt this room like water, and she when she went inside, she took her and she was she wearing uh, she showed her legs she she thought she, she thought there was water she doesn't want her clothes to get watery so she 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 put her legs and Nabi Sulaiman saw her legs and he fell in love and he married her which it does not exist at all it's this is not the reality at all this is where the misunderstanding this is where people only think about always relationship sex they always when they read anything they want to always take it this way and this is not the reality actually we are Allah Azza wa Jalla, he's showing us that a huge big secret that if we really study it more you will able to go and travel the realms of the universe he they went inside this room this room is made from from uh, stones and the, and like we know like these stones uh, they're made from crystals and multiple stones. Each one they have it has its own, its own magnetic field and its own frequency. And what's important about that is the frequency. So he is telling us that the the way it was designed, this room, in from the outside and inside, it was actually a very small room, not a big room like they said. It's like it's like a whole castle made from marmar. You know, marmar. It's like now you can see it in certain palaces. And it's it's like huge, and she thought this is water, and she showed her leg, and this is the reality. Reality not true because showing a leg in the Quran Kareem means something different. What does it mean? Because there is another ayah saying, when you die, your leg will be connecting to your other leg. Type many people they say, okay, 
this died how are we connecting those two legs together you know they say okay when you go to kafan you know we throw them like this and then we put those two con but they're not connected you know those two legs they're not connected they're not on top of each other you know they make them they release them what is the reality that Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling you look at your salat look at your salat salat always present all the universe all the realm that we're passing by and I made a lecture about it. I don't want to go deeper into the meaning of salat now but always when we go to the salat we stand we say like Allahu Akbar and then you know we connect those two those two legs present our our existence before Allah Azza wa Jal talked about that with Musa alayhi salam. he told him oh you're in the holy valley take off your shoes it doesn't mean like really f just physically taking off your shoes no taking off your shoes Allah said oh Take the love of money from your heart. Take the love of woman from your heart. You know, because you need to be pure. Not, not be, It's not saying, I'm not saying that if you don't love woman, you won't come pure anymore. But saying the connection with them, without Allah Azza wa Jal, will not make you pure. Even though this is an insulting, insulting thing to, to the Prophet. It's not true for me. I don't believe this in this. Our ulama said that. They said this is the bottom. This is the inside. Which is, I don't believe in it. The reality is when he said, take off the shoes that, the shoes that, the things, the hujub, you know, the covers that show you, does not show you what is your reality. Well, you came from the void and how, uh, and how you came to the alam al-barza, uh, the first one, alam al-zar, alam al-arham, and alam al-dunya over here, from the previous realms. Take off your hujub, hujub. That connecting you from because you know when we we take off our shoes we connected we are connected with earth sciences they say you are connected you now to earth you're grounded to earth there is no frequency passing by you except the frequency of earth that will give you a comfort now if you have a headache high headache always you don't know what's the reason take off your shoes and put them on sand you'll see you'll see it you'll see if this is the problem mainly from electromagnetic field that always passing by your body it's very important at least one time a week to connect with earth with your with your legs oh you connect outside in a garden in a you go to any park just put them put them in water in a sea in a river because this is a connection with earth and Allah Azza wa Jal with, with Musa alayhi salam he is connecting him with the reality of our self so what happened here when uh, when uh, the queen of uh, when Sheba she went inside inside of uh, this, this small temple made of all these frequencies she Allah Azza wa Jal he showed her her reality this is what means she kashafat an saqiha she showed her leg Allah Azza wa Jal he showed her uh, there's some narration that's saying Allah Azza wa Jal took her to the fall, fourth realm and he showed her the creation and he showed her everything so immediately when she went back with Sulaiman she said now I am Muslim with Sulaiman now you see how because let me, let's 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 take this and separate it okay ulama say I'm, I'm giving you a proof now ulama say no he showed her a castle because of this castle she said wow who can build this castle I'm, I am a Muslim it doesn't make any sense because he was able to take her palace, fly it, and then bring it in a blink of an eye to his, to her to his place. Why she was not Muslim there? There's a there's a miracle now. There's something scientific very big happened, and there's a big miracle. And she did not. She was not convinced that that Suleiman is right. She said maybe it might be magic. And now she went to the castle and she was immediately Muslim. No, this is, doesn't make sense. So now. We say that she, she saw the first proof. She was like, oh, maybe it's magic. Maybe they built the same one. I'm not sure what happened. But when she saw the reality inside this temple, she completely gave up. She said, I am a Muslim with Sulaiman. What does it mean? In one of the du'as of Imam Rida Sallallahu Alaihi he said uh, about, uh, about Balqis, Al-Nafs al khanith What does it mean? N mean that how we have inside us, inside ourselves, I'm not sure if it's, it's in, we have inside ourselves a uh, certain nafs, and this nafs always want to try to uh, bargain with the, with the huda, with the huda, with the peace, a uh, huda, yani connection with Allah Azza wa Jal, and this bargaining always has to always show it by proof, 
using that temper, our temper, مثلا, for example, when we become more wise, we become more patient. You see, a person trying in front of you to always show you bad things. Your nafs al khanis saw the truth. Nobody can control her anymore. Nobody can show her things that say, oh, I'm going to leave Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, many people, I would say, I'll tell you this because I lived in the both, in the East and the West. Many people from East, they come to the West, they will be like, oh, oh my God, that's so beautiful. That's, you know, they have beautiful parks. They have beautiful streets. They have beautiful, oh, so Islam is bad. I'm going to leave Islam. You know, because it's not religion what did this to the East. Not the religion. The people of the East did that to themselves. Religion saying, don't do it, don't steal. And you see all the government stealing, all the people stealing from each other. They say, don't throw garbage on the floor. You know, we have a hadith that say, if someone saw a garbage on the street and it, did, and it's, it was, and like, for example, bad, nobody was able to pass. And he took it, Allah Azza wa Jal would grant him heaven for that. Because he was able to save people from going through this rock or going through this garbage or so on and so on. Imagine yourself if you really studied about this yourself you control yourself you don't throw garbage on the floor you don't you don't lie you don't steal you don't do you always do amr bil ma'ruf and al mura forbid evil you know always talk about it with people hey so and so in a beautiful way in a beautiful manner the same way imam hassan hussein taught us you know with this man he was doing wudu and he was doing it wrong and they say oh grandpa you know that's beautiful they say oh grandpa jaddi and jaddi um rasulullah but in a, in a beautiful way they said can you please show us that who is right me or hussein that we're doing the wudu and they showed the wudu and he was he realized that he he's mistaken you know they, they were teaching him indirectly how they do the wudu indirectly see how how polite how beautiful how peaceful it is this is how allah Azza wa Jal want us and in the holy quran he's teaching us all these levels because one day he wants you to go to the ultimate level, the Muhammad status. How do you connect the Muhammad status? You see, there's oh, if we go even deeper with this, whatever I told you, you see that Isa alayhi salam, he was able to get fish, and fish represent the sea. How he was able to get the fish from the air? You see, so Isa alayhi salam is connecting with Musa and Sulaiman. You see, this is how Allah Azza wa Jal want you. He said, if you want to be in the ultimate way, you need to connect your nafs al ghadibi I'm now angry, but at the same time, there is something inside me cooling me down. If you cool down and but when you're you're angry, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you this fish. And you know the representation of fish is like viscous pigasas, the connection between Muhammad and Ali in the in the ultimate universe. Nihna we live in viscous pigasas, the, the big one. Allah Azza wa will give you something that presents the fish. And the fish is khayr kathir. It's something very ultimate for us. So this is the connection. We see certain places, Musa alayhi salam. The people, <coughs> they said we want to worship a cow. And ajal, you know, and and uh, they were they lost in a, in a desert for 10 years. So there is connection between Musa and Isa alayhi salam. Those people are inside them are dead. So Musa alayhi salam took him 10 years inside the desert to find their way because they need to to go to go the ultimate way to earth they need to go to earth inside earth and reborn again 10 years the equal the same way Musa alayhi salam went to marry the his woman it stayed 10 years you see so every prophet he still have a connection with the other with the other either with the other realm in this universe the other realm, the four realms, and the, the, the ether that covered them all together. And when you read the Holy Quran, now you, you will have more understanding about Allah Azza wa Jal, why he spoke about Musa alayhi salam this way. He said, I want to take my brother. Who is your brother? Your brother. When you when you become the in a Moses status, what is your brother? Who is your brother that is going to help you against the Pharaoh, the tyrant? And then there's Isa alayhi salam. He has his hawariyin, the people around him, he's teaching them. One of them is going to be a bad person. And then he's talking about Sulaiman alayhi salam and the way he connected with everything around him. The way he connected with the animal, the way he connected with the with the wind. You know, because the wind is is it has many many things that for example it will fertilize many places, the wind. Because of the wind when become windy. 
we have uh, we have the bees usually do the fertilizing or the wind itself it will take the eggs from place and first place it in some place this is how we live on earth because of the wind it's important to have the wind and same thing with the fire we're able to cook and eat we'll be able to produce energy our car work with the fire plasmas same thing many things work with this fire and Allah Azawajal said that even fire has a tree in the Holy Quran and we need to study this why this tree what is the presenting inside us because inside us there is fires too the ghadab the anger fire our brain go with the plasmas inside us so there is connection with the fire so because Allah Imam Ali said what because Imam Ali said you are we you are the universe all the universe is inside you so Allah Azza wa Jal, anything he mentioned in the Holy Quran he's talking about you he's talking about first the 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 story that he wants to teach you from it and at the same time he wants to teach you from inside you who are you exactly and how you can become more and more and more in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal, to become the ultimate in the Muhammadi status and inshallah I will try to talk about the Muhammadi status more deeper even from the Holy Quran about specifically about Surah Al-Fatih what does it, Surah Al-Fatih mean exactly and why Allah Azza wa Jal, sometime for example he say I will forgive all your sins to Rasulullah even though he doesn't have a sin how did he forgive his sins and and sorry to say that our ulama they took a different place they took it oh uh, that's a proof that he does he's a uh, he doesn't make any sense no that's not it's not but he's not talking about Rasulullah he's talking about something else Allah Azza wa Jal over here in Surah Al-Fatih and different places when he's spoken about talking about Rasul he's not talking about Rasulullah is it exactly he's talking about something very important that inshallah we will talk about it in a second lecture I will just try to answer a few questions type <clears throat> I have a brother Hassan he said uh, Salam, what is the evil and from where it came? If you uh, go to the lecture that I said how we were created from the void, I spoke about the evil and how Allah Azza wa Jal, when He covered the nur of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in certain way that the, the way of Kaaba exists now. The Kaaba, you know, when we go do pilgrimage, exists now. And when He covered this nur, how we, the void was created. If you please go back to the this lecture and you'll see evil work it came from because we are from the same place that evil came from the devil like what we call the devil Iblis Iblis is a soul one of these souls that he, he said no to Allah Azza wa Jal Allah Azza wa Jal he did what he did with him same thing with us I explained exactly why we are here Allah Azza wa Jal said to the devil bow to Adam he refused to bow in earth uh, now, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, bow to Adam, to your real Adam. Who's your real Adam? Is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because I showed that uh, lecture, the ayat of the Quran Al-Karim, where it's, it's signifying Adam, our, our father, or the real Adam. You see, because I said, every prophet is a presentation from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our imtihan, our test on and, and earth, same thing like Iblis. He's telling you, you see, this is Muhammad Wali Muhammad. Do you want to bow for them or no? And this is your test. You're doing the exact test that Iblis is doing. And we are connecting to the same test and same thing. And if you don't want to do it, don't do it. You'll be like him. If you want to do it, you'll pass. Bye. Mr. Jack, Jack Walter. I have a question. If Adam was the first creature, human, then why the human body structure if is feminine? Okay. Nobody said he was first a human. Nobody said. Imam Ali said before, uh, this is the difference between Shia and Sunni scholars, or uh, the school of thought. Imam Ali said before before you, before us, there was 1,000, 1,000 Adam. This is mean there was 1 million Adam. There were 1 million generations. Yani 1 million, for example, our Adam lived 12 years. Before him was someone he lived 20,000 years 30 I'm not sure one before him one before him and then they they, they reached the ultimate goal and they completely disappeared from earth and Allah Azza wa Jal he raised again and again and again it always has to come from the feminine point of view why because it has an insight and it, it has a button and it has some what is the insight the insight is exist in the name of Allah himself 
And I'm going to tell you the theology of it. I'm not going to tell you why from the biology. Because you, you'll be able to connect the dot. From the theology, Allah Azza wa Jal, even from the name of Allah in Arabic, you, t- you take the first letter, see, Lillah. The second letter will be Lahu. The third letter will be Hu. Huwa mean Huwa in Arabic always present man, male. You see, they say, okay, Allah Azza wa Jal here, he's neither male, neither female. Why he's always focusing on the male? He's not focusing on the male part. He's telling you, and even the name is talking about Hadith al Kisa. The name of Allah is talking about Hadith al Kisa. Why? Because the ha over here, the form of it is female. Because it presenting Fatima to Zahra, salam alayhi. Fatima, her name, and with the ha, with the female part. In the Arabic, if you study the Arabic language, you'll, you'll understand more. Because in, in the Arabic language, you'll say, this letter is male, this letter is female. It's, it is to that depth. Because the Quran al-Kareem, Allah Azza wa Jal used this language. And this language, Allah Azza wa Jal created it from geometry, sacred geometry. In Arabic, I spoke more about that. In English, inshallah, in the future, I'll speak more about that. If you study sacred geometry and the formation of letters, you see the ha is the the letter that connect feminism with masculinism, but it's all, all together is a feminine. And it's presenting a Sayyidah Zahra, salamu alayhi. Why, why this is? Because he's saying you are like the people who go to Hajj. You know, the Hajj is presenting this. You see, we are like the magnet magnets. We go to the male. We are female, go to the male. For example, in Arabic, our my soul, I'll say, hiya, ruhi. You know, my soul in Arabic, he say, hiya. Hiya mean feminine. You know, my soul is feminine in Arabic. My nafs, meaning myself, is feminine. Hiya nafsi in Arabic. Allah Azza wa Jalla, when he speak in Arabic, he speak it as a feminine. Certain places speaking as masculine. Why? Because he's saying there's one soul that all need to revolve around, which is, is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the formation of soul, formation of ruh, you know, the spirit, has to be a female that is can, can, connected with the male. Over here, not talking about sex. I'm talking about positive and negative, you know. I'm not talking about the way we, we perceive feminism, the way we perceive masculinism. I'm talking about the energy, you know, the foundation of universe. If you want to build something, the universe has to be positive and negative. That's why we always say in Islam that we always have to be male and female. It cannot be male and male because you're destroying the fabric of the universe itself when there's two males together. When there's two female, you don't see the effect now, but you will see it after. You will see it after in the energy. You see it after in the in the way it, the universe is going on, because each one of us representing a universe. Imagine a universe plus is going with a different universe plus. What's gonna happen to that? To that? The the funny way if you study, two days ago I was reading an article saying that uh, they were doing they were measuring the radioactive element in in United States. And they say, you know what, because there's many bombs they, they were testing in the, during World War II. There's hundreds of bombs under the earth and so on and the sea and so on. They said, you know, there's certain isotopes still flow, flowing around. And they're trying to see, you know, from every state how many still isotopes are floating, you know. So they were, they were very surprised that uh, one of the students, he got honey, you know, honey, and they found that there was 300% more isotopes uh, hot isotopes that's very dangerous to human cause cancer than any place so what we're talking about saying you do bombing in 2019 I'm sorry 1950 it's gonna still affect you till this point it's not going anyway this is the energy so when you have two people are committing this sin it's gonna fly everywhere and it's gonna affect everywhere around us from the energy point of view not just from the isotope point of view. This is science. This is how Allah Azza wa Jal created. So the same thing, the feminism, the 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 embryology that you're talking about, it's all connected to the Allah Azza wa Jal. He's saying, you know, your body will be feminine because it has to go on the floor. Uh, when we die, we we'll go under because it has to be married to the soul and then disappear. Your nafs is a feminine because it has to go to the ultimate one. Your, your spirit uh, go, to go to the ultimate one because it has to connect it to this energy that kept us our identity, kept us our energy for existence. 
Uh, and the brother, he's talking more about uh, uh, in uh, in the questions. Uh, that he's talking about uh, the breast of can be found in men and women. Although it's used, no, it's not useless. So said it's useless. There is more even study. You know, I uh, if you start if you go to Google and Google like what is the useless part inside the human, inside us, that will give you like six or seven parts. Even the hair. Even the hair, they say it's useless uh, to be to, to be existing. Actually, it's not existing. The more we're studying, the more we're saying, the more there's researchers, the more saying, no, it's very important to have, for example, the hair. Because it's connecting. For example, when you get cold, all your hair will go up. Because there's certain energy we are acquiring from that. For example, I'll give you a small example. Even though I'm not a researcher, and that, but I'm trying to connect dots here. You see that like the the they call them uh, for the for the cat they call them uh, the musketeers the the cat you know that she has this over here it, those one they not they don't have any uh any nerves inside them but if you cut them for the cat she will always fear she will always feel that she's feared she has fear she cannot do anything she will always hide till they grow up again so uh, it's very important that to study this psychological point of view, the biological point of view for our body. Why those existing here? They have a reason why we're called they go up. You know, the, the skin will contract and this is will go up. Because they're acquiring certain energy from somewhere to give us this energy. Maybe from the from ionic energy, maybe from different energy. Nobody yet, all our medical field always go inside the cells nobody really go outside and make these researches and which is i see now more people they're doing that same thing for for a man man yes they they're very important for him too because they represent uh something connected to neurons you see if you want to know anything about a human body you want to study earth the connection between earth and earth let's say the acupuncture can we do the the, the earth acupuncture some some scientists they say yes we can do how we can do it the same way that putting high stones inside earth you see when we put those needles inside our body because we need we need this to take in this energy flow it back to the source flow it back to the organ same thing earth if you study the same way how why the hang stones and different places in egypt they're all connecting each other with straight lines and if you want to connect, for example, the handstand in a red, in a in a circle, then there's something over here that is spreading the energy. The one to spread the energy to different organs of the earth. You see, so we are same thing. Why we don't study this and connect them together? Because the the old science they used to do acupuncture to the earth itself. If they see earth dying some places, they used to place those st stones in, in a way that connecting the, the flow of energy that to, they need to reroute it to some place else. Same thing our body, our, our breast, male breast, it has this circulation. And this circulation, it, if we study it more, for sure it will be spreading more energy to different places. Same thing for women. Woman Allah Azza wa created this one because she want to give this t food to the to the to her kids. At the same time, there's something else with them. She's give the, her food the kid something else with with that. <coughs> Regarding uh, herding that all baby born female, and then I'm not really sure about that. I I know from. Uh, you know studying the cycles inside for for example the building the body two months and a half and then later all org the the organ this specific organ will start in formation i we really need to study that more but for sure it's all connected to the same point of view i'm telling you okay <coughs> different uh, questions XH, uh, he has few questions, brother. He's saying uh, it is seeking more money from God is bad. Even uh, money, I want to help a lot of people from. Okay, we have. I have. Let's say me, myself, and everybody. At the beginning, like learning about religion and so on and so on, I've seen many people, many, many poor people 
in uh, in uh, countries and really want to help them and so on and so on. The growing older more and you see start realizing why Allah Azza wa Jal sometimes he give us money why he does not give us money. If Allah Azza wa Jal want those people to be to be uh, to have more money he will give them money through me through anybody around in the universe. It's not just depending on me. But there is reasons, you know, he's telling us why I'm not giving those people money. Because if he gave those people money, they will be destroyed. Or those people are living under a tyrant and saying, people, you need to move. You need to seek justice. If you don't move, nobody going to move for you. Same thing like now, for example, in Lebanon. Or in uh, Lebanon, we live under those uh, bad politicians and many people are, are poor. Let's say I... I always send them money, you know, just give them, send them money, send them money, send them money. They always gonna just uh, learn, just take money from people and not moving anymore. You see, I can help them for a certain period of time, but if you don't, if they don't want to help themselves, how are they gonna move? You see, so Allah Azza wa said, okay, I'll give you money. You do sadaqah, you do zakat, you do, uh, you help people around you because this people, ma this money meant for the other people, but he's testing you with it. At the same time, he said, you know what? I know my servant, let's say you, your name, Muhammad. I know Muhammad, he's my servant. I'm going to give him a reward. Instead of me sending, let's say, this thousand dollars through someone else or through something to this guy, poor guy, I'm going to give Muhammad this rizq. And Muhammad is going to take it and give it to that poor man. So this way I can give money for that poor man. At the same time, I can give a good reward for Muhammad. Because he deserves it. At the same time, it will be a test. At the same time, you see? So we are, are building ourselves with the wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's not just, please, Allah Azza wa Jal, make me learn about Jafar. So I can go to all the lotteries. I can make money from lotteries. You know, I can know the numbers. You know, there are certain signs that you know it. But let's learn about that and then I'll make millions and I'll help many people and so on. Look, Allah Azza wa Jal, if He want this millions to be all, if He want, they want them all to be, all to be rich, He will make them rich. But is making people rich always good? No, it's not. Look in the Western places, you know, they throw so much food, they, they don't care about each other. They don't want to fast. They always say we're better than God. God created us and if forget us. So we need to be better. They always worry about the future. They always put their money everywhere just to, you know, to make, to make themselves uh, happy. It does not give them happiness, anything. They just give them stress all the time and so on. But Allah Azza wa Jal, behind everything in life, there's a reason for it. So you're saying, uh, give you money just to help other people. He can help him through other people. He can help you. To, he can help him through you. But is always money the answer? No, it's not the answer. Sometimes you need to go to the poor country and teach them, for example, how to go get fish, how to make, how to build uh, places, how to go against their government so they can bring better government. There's no corruption in it uh, to be better. So if you just give them money, it's not going to be a, a solution. Okay, uh, all the answers went up. Okay, so the second question is saying, is it bad to use law of attraction to make more money? For example, I want to build business. So, yeah, well, using the law of, you see, there's difference between law of attraction, this the way the people talking about it, and what is Allah Azza wa Jal telling you to be? For example, Allah Azza wa Jal telling you, yeah, there's energy inside you. Yes, this energy. Uh, can convince people around you that you really want to attract uh, good people around you. Are, how are you gonna do it? Well, I sit down home and I, I do chakras all the time and I, I do nothing. You see, most of the people are using law of attraction now. They're they're failures. I'll give you many names. You know, I have many people even on my my website or in, even on my page. I go to visit the, visit their page. They have a lot of problems in their life. Uh, because this life meant to be like this okay what is the law of attraction in a Islamic point of view in Islamic point of view it's saying that it's saying to yourself I need to be good I need to be a good man asking Allah Azza wa Jal praying to Allah Azza wa Jal. at the same time changing my my myself my future I really need to work I really need to pass by certain tests I really need to believe in myself in a way that I want to be a servant of Allah Azza wa Jal 
Same thing like Sulaiman, uh, same thing like Yusuf السلام, inside the jail did. He was helping people inside. He was so, you see, because Sulaiman presenting, representing us, we need to learn from the prophets. So, your law of attraction here saying, I need to be confident of myself. I need to serve the, my community. I need to serve my people. Allah Azza wa Jal, if He loves you, He'll make everyone love you. And the end of the day, Allah Azza wa Jal, it's not His goal to make you rich. Because money is a responsibility. Prophets before, when they used to make money, like for example, we have some narration about the Prophet that Ayyub, he had a business, you know. So sometimes they bring him money. When he put the money home, and this is his money, he used to be all all day up and, and shaking because he had money at, in the house. And people around him might be needing money and he has he is holding this money. So holding money always in your hand is is at this at this age is good S some saving good for some emergency situation <coughs> but always t talking uh, bringing uh, law of attraction and so on to make more money and more uh, this is will be a test for you it's no more attraction law of attraction saying okay i gave you a million dollars what did you do with it because you learned from the law of attraction that you're attracting everything good for you and you learn how to be a selfish at the end of the day and many westerners and many people who teach the law of attraction always talking about themselves and Allah Azza wa does not want you always talk about yourself he wants you to be confident your confidence will talk about you he wants to be sure about you what you have what you have your knowledge your presentation will be talking about you not not any other thing okay. A lot of American businesses using DMT and magnetic mushroom to this leading society that is good to make you connect with your personality. You see, this is again we go ab about the we go about the this laws. You know, oh, there is always something very bad. Every like for example, government want people to die. You know, because they want to control. Them. While if the people die, they cannot make the taxes. They cannot be powerful anymore. You know, it's always contradicting with the reality. For example, if you want to buy a gram of DMT, let's say it costs you $10, $15. Why someone selling, let's say, candy, you know, it's 25 cents, you're going to put DMT in it. For what reason? Because in reality, if, if, if I say, let's say, if I say I have a business and I want to put DMT inside my candy, people will, will pay $100 for it. You know, I'll make more business. The reality now, many people, they want to be drugged. Because they don't want to think about life, so you're saying people and government they're putting DMT in it, just to just to drug the society. But so it's society is searching for the drugs. Why they want to be drugged anymore? It doesn't make any sense. That's why I always say, those kind of laws they're always spreading around Facebook or WhatsApp. Always try to filter them. You you really need to to understand how government work. Government they don't really care about you or me. They care about how much at the end of the day we make. So we can tax it. At the end of the day, you need to live happy so they can live happy. They care in a certain way, not the way you're talking about, not the way of destruction you're always saying. It does not make any sense. For example, when they start this virus, what we have now, they said, oh, the government made it because they want to kill all, all the people. Well, in reality, they, they lost a lot. In reality, they, in many economies, they lost many, much, like too much money. They say, okay, because... Uh, the the other company they're making yeah one one two p three four five company making million but the governments they lost a lot many politicians lost their status in inside the society because they didn't know how to handle it uh, they we did nobody and you know, even in united states there's five hundred thousand people who died you know in the flu itself regular flu every single year there's in the united states six hundred thousand people they died and only in a regular flu so so far, uh, COVID or so on, still under the regular flu dying. And because people will, are, were isolating, nobody got the bad flu like before. So all the deaths were transferred to the other place. Okay, uh, Ah Suleiman is talking about, I read this, uh, I read the, this your story about Imam Mahdi from the questions. In reality, this question, this, uh, this is, does not exist. There's no story that say that. If you wanna talk, if you wanna bring a story about Imam Mahdi, you need to learn from it. Let's say a man he went to a place at which w woman were wor was working there, and then 
he he looked at her and he fell in love and he said you know what he proposed to her and he married her okay what's what where is the bad part why Imam Mahdi want to be angry you see this story does not exist this story is not reality because different places like I'll tell you a story about Imam Mahdi let's say there's one one guy he was doing awrad too much he opened the books old book he said if you want to meet Imam Mahdi you need to read let's say Surah Al-Fatiha 1000 1, times a day for 40 days and then he did it, he did it every single day, 1,000 times, taking like 5-6 hours from his time, every single day. And then the fourth day he dreamed that someone told him, okay, Imam Mahdi, he will be at that store uh, at, at this time, so you need to be there. And this guy, he was a religious person, he went there, but he couldn't enter the store. So someone came in and he told him, you stay here, you know, you stay a little far from the store, but you see what happened. And Imam Mahdi was sitting in a... In a he was sitting in a chair and there was a guy, he was, he's, he's a seller, he sells stuff. And he saw Imam Mahdi and Imam Mahdi, he told him, yani he told him, Salaam Alaikum for the other person, but, but he, he, the other person could not come to the Imam Mahdi, so he stayed in his place. And uh, what happened is, a woman came into that seller and she told him, I have this, you know, before they used to sell these locks. I have this locks, I, it cost me. Say, uh, 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 this lux cost in general places ten dollars. Let's say ten dollars, but it was ten than a year. And then uh, he told he told, he said, you know, and I'm, I'm very poor woman. I have my son. He's sick, and I really need the money. I need like three three uh, than a year to help. So he felt bad for her. He said, and this th that was an old lock. He said, you know, this old lock can be fixed from here and so on and so on. And you can do it. I, I'll give you nine for it. She said, "I don't. I don't need nine. It's only for three. Everybody told me." So he said, "No, I can fix it. Look." He started showing her that he's he can fix it. He can sell it for more. He said, "How can you sell it for that much?" And the new one is ten. He said, "I can. This is my business. People ask for it. You know." So he helped the woman without saying, "This is sadaqa for you." Now, and um, you know, you see on uh, Facebook and many people in Iraq in Lebanon. And, you see they bring some money he took a selfie and he gave them to the poor people you see the poor people they're looking down you are destroying their dignity and this is very bad Allah Azza wa will not give you a good reward will give you bad deed for what you're doing you're hurting people you're showing everybody that you're giving sadaqah and this is very bad if you want to do it help them without showing that you are helping them this is even better than sadaqah you know he, he could say you know what I'll buy it from three, da, three dinar from you and I'll give you this five for you that's bad. Still good. He show he did not say to anybody. But at the same time, he was over all this, and he said he said no. I'll, I'll give you nine dinars, and I can sell it for ten. And this is all what I'm, I'm looking to make money from that. So he helped the lady, and Imam Mahdi looked at that man. He said, "You see, this is how I this is the how I want you to be. If you want to meet me, don't just read." This uh, yeah, it's okay. You're you're giving good energy for yourself. You're giving because this is the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. But if you're doing this, all this, just to meet me or to have high, high, higher status in spirituality, you need to be like this man, this man who who saw Allah Azza wa Jal. He's helping people without the other people hurting other people. He's being so dignified to the woman. He gave her more money than what she asked for, uh, and and really he he's. This is how Imam Mahdi wants his follower to be. Not just being always in a sujood, in a salat. On, and then when we go to the house, we hurt our woman. We hit her, we hit our kids. We don't know how to talk up to them and so on and so on. So when you listen to this story, you'll say, yeah, this is Imam Mahdi. Not that other story you told me. Because there's no connection between this Imam Mahdi and this Imam Mahdi. <coughs> Anyway, there's a, it's been an hour now. I would, uh, I'm, I really urge everyone who continued this uh, lecture so far. Uh, I really thank you. I thank every single one of you, especially, especially the English lecture follower. Inshallah, I'll promise you I'll be making more one, even in more in depth. I'll be talking more about uh, politics, uh, Zuhur Imam Mahdi, the appearance of Imam Mahdi, where we are exactly now, what's happening now, the same way in Arabic. And please, I ask you to pray for me, pray for my family. I'll pray always for you guys. And Bismillah, uh, Rahman, Rahim, Walasr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr, lalladina amanu wa amnu salihat. 
وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله peace be upon you